The movie Finding Nemo inspired millions of kids to fall in love with tropical fish and even start their own fish tanks. But did Pixar Animation Studios show people how to make a fish tank properly? In this video, we're doing a deep dive into the fish tank of Finding Nemo. Hey guys, welcome back to Matt Keeps Fish, and today we're talking about the fish tank of Finding Nemo. If it's a good idea to make one like this, or if it's even possible. And just so it's clearly stated, I do not own any of this footage. I'm not trying to sell this footage or anything like that. Please don't copyright strike me. All right, so we're starting off with the first shot of the tank, and it's when Nemo is dumped into the tank. Now, already we have a problem with that. This dentist just took a wild clownfish from a reef and threw it in his fish tank. Beyond the fact that this clownfish could be bringing parasites or harmful bacteria with it, he didn't even temperature acclimate the bag. No matter what the fish is, if you're not floating it and maybe chemically acclimating it as well, you are opening that fish up to shock and possibly a quick death. He also left the lights on, which causes a ton of stress and is also going to make the fish want to hide. This is a great shot of the tank because it lets me know based on those newspapers down there or whatever they are, this tank is about four feet long. It's also pretty deep front to back, so it's probably a 75 gallon. Now, although we're going to be critiquing the heck out of this tank, it does look really realistic, so I got to hand it to the animators. Based on the first shot and this shot, I'm guessing he's using a fluorescent tube light. And as far as the heater goes, I don't really see any heater. I kind of see the intake for a filter, but for a tropical fish like a clownfish, he's really going to need a higher temperature assuming that the whole room isn't heated, which I'm guessing it's not. Now, if this was a freshwater tank for a beginner, for somebody just coming into my store for the first time and they want some tetras and some little catfish or something like that, this is a pretty good tank. He's actually got it pretty densely planted with fake plants, and that's really going to help the different fish to feel safe. He's also got some ceramic or plastic decorations in here, lots of bubblers. There's some pretty good water flow from the filter and from the bubblers, but it's probably still not enough for saltwater fish. Go and look at any saltwater tank right now, unless it's like a Pico Reef, and I guarantee you it's gonna have one of those giant water pumps on the side of it. Because there's a lot of current in the ocean, and ocean fish are really well adapted to just kind of ride with it. But again, I love how this tank is animated. The water looks so realistic. They even have that detail of algae growing up the corners on the silicone like it really would in a fish tank. Once again, props to the animators, because on this side shot, you can see there are watermarks from fingerprints or from water splashing out. And you can see how it's a harder white, like it's a stronger white. It's not just kind of translucent. And that's what happens when it's harder water, when there's calcium in the water, that kind of causes this white stain. And I know because I used to get that a lot when I was on well water. There's a lot of calcium in well water. I found that guy struggling for life out in the reef, and I saved him. Yeah, you definitely saved him by putting him in this freshwater-themed tank. Like, look at this shot. We've got bright blue gravel. There's a fake Madagascar lace plant in the back, some red Ludwigia, some random purple pe peperomia. Kind of looks like... Uh, Kind of looks like my money wart back here actually it's probably just a purple money wart lots of weird plastic freshwater plants which probably wouldn't make a saltwater fish feel very at home i mean if it were me setting up a saltwater tank which that is very far in the future why wouldn't i want it to replicate what a saltwater scape in nature would look like why would i want it to look like this Whoa, slow down, little fella. All right, so now we're introduced to our tank mates for this little clownfish. And we'll start from best to worst. First, we have the royal grandma, and it's a smaller fish, so the tank size works. It's semi-aggressive, but a lot of saltwater fish are. And it's not too hard to care for. So in a 75-gallon tank with a bunch of plastic plants and a clownfish, it looks pretty good so far. Next, we have the yellow tang, which if he's being fed right, this tank would work pretty well for him too. He's getting on the larger end, but a 75-gallon tank is fairly adequate. So far, as long as all these fish are getting fed right, I don't think there's really an issue with the pairing so far, but we don't actually see any of them get fed in this entire movie. We see the entire tank get clouded up with scum, 
but we don't see them eat anything. So maybe the owner is starving them and that's why they wanna get out of here. Okay, sorry, so I just did a little bit of research on yellow tanks because I was a little bit skeptical on them being small enough for this tank size. And most people recommend that they have a tank larger. So a tank that's 100 gallons or 150 gallons. This kind of goes across the board for saltwater fish. If you have a relatively small fish, it's gonna need a larger tank than it would if it was a freshwater fish. For whatever reason. Okay, so I just looked it up, and if you did a firemouth cichlid, which is the same size as a yellow tang, you would need a maximum of 50 gallons for a pair. That would be adequate. But for a yellow tang, which is the same size as a firemouth, you would need over 100 gallons, 150 gallons maybe. So if someone could please tell me why saltwater fish of the same size as a freshwater fish needs so much more space please tell me. My best guess is that with a specific gravity having to be maintained in the aquarium, it's probably easier with a higher volume, but I don't see why it wouldn't be doable in a smaller volume. Regardless, we move on to our next fish, the three-line damselfish, and it's pretty similar to our royal grandma. Semi-aggressive, tank is adequate size, does okay alone, no big deal. So far everything's pretty good until we start talking about the porcupine pufferfish. And let's start with the small stuff. He's right now floating right beside a clamshell. What do pufferfish eat in the wild with those big chomping teeth? And what do we think is going to happen if he tries to chomp through this shell to get to the potential meat inside? Well, he's probably going to be swallowing a lot of decoration fragments, which results in the pufferfish getting stressed and potentially releasing toxins into the water. But I gotta pause and say, the more I'm looking at the pufferfish, the more it looks like they just stuck a human face on the body of a pufferfish. It looks pretty realistic and kind of goes with all the fish here. Back to why having this porcupine puffer in this fish tank is a horrible idea. If the yellow tang being eight inches long makes this tank too small, what does the porcupine puffer getting to 12 inches long mean? And that's not even when he's puffed up. Hey, the plastic plants and the decorations, they're not a big deal, but if a fish gets trapped between the puffer fish and a decoration while he's blown up, that's a bit of a problem. So too big, gonna eat something that it shouldn't, gonna probably release toxins, probably skewer fish, and lastly to mention, he's gonna eat some of these smaller fish. The clownfish, he might be getting away, but the rule with fish is if the mouth is larger than the tank mate, it will eat the tank mate. And I mean, in this scene, it kind of looks like he's going for the kill. Ah, the ocean. The ocean! <gasps> ah, he hasn't been decontaminated yet! Yeah, so finally they address it. Yeah, he just came straight from the ocean. He's probably got some crazy bacteria and parasites that he's been dealing okay with, but the other fish might not handle it so well. And I don't really know why this diver grabbed this fish out of the ocean. Because the rule is you want as healthy a fish as you can bag if you're going to bring it home. And this fish has a deformed fin, which means he could have something that's wrong with him, something that could be infectious to the other fish. Um, so it's really not a good idea. Okay, so here's our little red skunk shrimp and he's actually doing what's natural for him. In the wild and in fish tanks, they do pick little parasites off of fish and eat them. Um, I don't think that they will do that for all types of parasites. I don't think you can just put a cleaner shrimp in quarantine and boom, your fish are fine. I think it's a little bit more complicated than that. This guy probably still should have quarantined. Oh, and also this shrimp definitely getting eaten by the buffer. All right, so in this shot, we get a really good look at a beautiful fish, and that is the Moorish Idol. Once again, they did a great job of animating this fish so that it's got some personality, but it's also quite realistic. I really don't think the design team did their research on if this would be a good fish in a fish tank, because not only does it need a tank larger than 75 gallons, it's also very difficult to keep alive. And it's not because they jump out and land on dental tools. It's because they need a very specific diet. They tend to like being in groups, which is hard to do because it's a very big fish that needs a very specific diet. So now you have a bunch of fish that need a very big tank, bigger than one would on its own, and all of them need 
a specific diet of, I believe, sponge. Yeah, so they do need a lot of sponge matter. They also need a lot of small crustaceans. They need coral polyps. They need algaes. They need lots of different foods, and they need it twice a day. So that's going to be kind of hard to keep up with, and it's part of why a lot of Moorish idols die in fish tanks. And I just looked up tank size as well. It is over 75 gallons. Some people are saying have a thousand gallon tank because that way it's not going to be too hard to keep a bunch of them together. They do like being together. Okay, I do take that back a little bit because sometimes Moorish idols do not do well in groups. So 200 gallons is just fine. But this dentist doesn't have a 200 gallon tank. He has a 75 full of plastic plants. He likes bubbles. Okay, well, there's our starfish, Peach. Peach is a pink starfish, which is a very creative name. And I didn't find a lot on the difficulty of care for these starfish. Like every living thing in a fish tank, the water needs to be kept stable. But other than that, the starfish needs a lot of protein, which is a problem because um, this dentist never feeds his fish. As far as feasibility for a pink starfish, I think that you could keep it well enough in a 75 gallon tank, even if it's covered in plastic plants, but not with a porcupine puffer fish, because like a lot of the things already, it will eat them. Finally, we get a good look at the hang on back filter. And the first thing that I notice is that it's really small for a tank this size, especially with a porcupine puffer fish, which produces a lot of waste, although not if you don't feed them. So maybe that's maybe that's the dentist's big trick. As we get a look inside the filter, we notice another big problem, which is that it's just an empty box with some algae in it. There's no sponge, there's no ceramic, there's nothing. And so this filter, as it turns out, has not been doing much filtering at all. There's not even a cover on the intake to catch particles. Heavy hitters like porcupine puffer fish would really benefit from some carbon filtration in here, but there's not even that. The only filtration that there kind of is, is that bio wheel, which has anaerobic bacteria growing on it, but it's probably not enough. There are those of you on my channel who would argue that you don't need a filter at all on your tank, but that you just need the gravel bed to have bacteria growing in there. But the problem with that is you can't complete that process because the plants in this tank are all plastic. So I, I really don't see how this is possible. What we need is clay. Just paint the panel inside there and jam the gears. You do that and this tank's going to get filthier and filthier bottom and pretty soon the dentist will have to clean the tank himself. And when he does, he'll take us out of the tank, put us in the individual baggies, then we'll roll ourselves down the counter, out the window, walk on and into the bushes, pop straight into the harbor. First of all, why would clogging a filter cause the tank to fill with algae? If I turned off the filters on either of my aquariums, it would cause the water surface to go still, which could grow algae since there's not as much gas exchange. However, on this tank, there's still lots of surface agitation with the volcano and all the other bubblers. Now, maybe it's not the water movement that was the big change. Maybe it was the fact that the filter is no longer pulling in waste. But since the filter didn't have any sponge or ceramic media or anything in it, what was it doing once it pulled in that waste? It was just shooting it right back out. So by turning off the filter, what did Gil do? Nothing. He just made it less comfortable for his sea-loving self. So the plan doesn't make sense for two reasons. If they wanted to stop surface agitation and thus create algae in the absence of gas exchange, then they should have also turned off the bubblers. If they wanted to turn off the filter so that it would stop collecting waste and thus leave it in the fish tank for the algae to grow off of, then they didn't need to waste their time because the filter wasn't collecting anything. But that's not even the end of it because why did they want to get this tank dirty in the first place? They wanted to get it dirty because they wanted to be taken out of the tank and put in bags while it was clean. So maybe I don't understand you saltwater people all that well, but why would you take all of your fish out of the tank so that you could clean the algae, even though some of the fish that were already in the tank eat algae? All you're accomplishing is stressing the fish out. But I think at this point, we already know that this dentist is not a good fish keeper. And I've talked a lot about the thoughts of anthropomorphic fish, but... If you guys like this video, leave it a like. If you have ideas for other fish tanks from movies that we can review, send them to me. I would love to review them on this channel. And if you guys want to see more of that and updates on my tanks, care guides, stuff like that, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the second.